for Around the Ozarks in 5, brought to you by Adventure Cave Tours. Live a day in the life of a real adventurer with Adventure Cave Tours and the Springfield Green County Park Board, reminding you to go play. Here are your hosts, Ethan and Sarah Forheads. And here we are. Good morning to you on Monday. It's been a long, hot weekend. Hope you made it through. Uh, we got some news to talk about this morning. Yeah, kind of a lot of news. Um, and honestly, much of it is weather related, not just the heat either. But uh, we'll be talking about that in just a bit as well. But for now, we will start uh, all over on the West Coast where things are about to get real dicey. A deluge of heavy rain from Tropical Storm Hillary is hitting California after making landfall along Mexico's Baja coast. California, in fact, is in a state of emergency. Officials there say Southern California could get a year's worth of rain in just a few days. Forecasters are telling people not to worry as much about the winds, although they could be fierce, uh, but really about the downpour, heavy downpours, and likely mass flooding. Uh, Get this, also at the same time that the storm was coming ashore with all the rain yesterday afternoon, a magnitude 5.1 magnitude earthquake hit at the same time. So truly a time to be praying for California and for Baja, Mexico as well. So that is in California. And then in Washington state, they are having their own set of natural disasters and also under a state of emergency. There, they are dealing with wildfires burning, even into Canada um, and in Spokane County, Washington. Two big fires started on Friday. They are still burning. One person was killed. Evacuation orders are underway. Uh, More than 20,000 acres have been charred so far, and the fire is said to be zero contained. So the fires are threatening about 150 homes, uh, and again, the evacuation orders have been sent out. Man, it's unbelievable what's going on. I spent the whole weekend. Convoy of Hope is responding to many of these. And, and I spent the, the weekend on the phone, on the computer, trying to figure out what we're doing and just dealing with with all of that. I can tell you Convoy of Hope is uh, very busy responding to several of these disasters. Uh, the devastating wildfires in Washington State, as well as up in Canada, we're responding there. Uh, making plans to help in California because, as Sarah said, the flooding is out of going to be out of control. I mean, can you imagine? They're talking about in Death Valley, for example, they get I think three inches of rain a year, and they're gonna they could get that in an hour. That's mind blowing. In a lot of these areas, I lived in Las Vegas for five years, and whenever it rained hard in Las Vegas, and they're in the path of this as well, uh, there were areas that just flooded and it was rivers moving down the road because they don't ever get that rain. So they don't have any way to, to deal with it. They don't have any place for it to go. Uh, you know, like we have everything set up for water runoff, uh, in trenches and canals and all that sort of thing. They don't have anything like that out West because they never get the rain. This is a once in a lifetime event. Uh, so, Convoy of Hope, uh, of course, is also already on the ground that has been for for more than a week now in Maui following the wildfires there. So it's a very, very busy time. And then down in the uh, Atlantic, uh, heading maybe into the Gulf are a few storms that could turn into hurricanes. So there is a lot going on right now. And uh, Sarah's right. Prayers are are appreciated in California and in Mexico and Florida or uh, Hawaii still and maybe down in the Gulf. There's one that's at this point, the models have it going toward Texas in the Gulf, but way, way too early to know that exactly. But right. Man, oh man, it's a busy time all of a sudden. Yes. Well, in other news, today is back to school for many schools. Ozark starts back today among many others. Springfield goes back tomorrow. Uh, Tis the season for back to school. So if you're driving around, make sure that you're wary of the uh, school zones and the crosswalks where students are going to be crossing over bus stops. Um, Also, some of the bus routes have changed this year. So you can check out the parent portal for your district's website. Check out those new routes. But just uh, have a good day, kiddos. If you're listening to this in your car on your drive to school, we hope that it's a fantastic year. Yeah. Teachers, administrators, students, parents. Good luck. <laughs> we uh, hope it goes well. Us included. Well. We hope it goes us well. Yes. Included. Yes. Us included. Amen. 
no doubt. Uh, well, the sinkhole saga continues on Highway 60 near 65. Most of the lanes, uh, though, are now open. It all started Thursday afternoon. The craziness, the sinkhole opened up on Highway 60, uh, westbound, just west of Highway 65. Caused traffic delays on Friday before most of uh, those lanes were able to reopen Friday afternoon. At its largest, that sinkhole was about 35 feet long, 15 feet across. So it's a pretty good-sized sinkhole in a terrible place for a sinkhole. Uh, the Missouri Department of Transportation is working to fill it and uh, make plans to uh, to get all the lanes reopened there. But, man, the traffic was crazy. People had You were stuck in it for more than an hour. You had to go all the way up because if you're, if you're on coming from Branson, Ozark, uh, north on 65, and you want to go west on 60, you had to go all the way up the battlefield because the giant high-arching ramp was closed. And... Uh, I, I was actually laughing at myself because I was just, you know, along for the ride really, but it turned into longer than I thought. And I had my running shoes in my car and I had cash, which I don't typically carry cash. So I took it upon myself to go get myself a coffee while I was sitting in the traffic, just pulled on in and grabbed a coffee. And then I'm like looking in the back and I'm seeing my running shoes calling my name. So then I went down to the Greenways Trail because I was there at like Battlefield and Lone Pine. So I was like, You yeah, stopped on the go. way? You just I pulled ended, over well, the side of the I road? I had sat there for 50 minutes and I was barely moving. So then when I get to moving, I want to do something. And I had cash. What was I to do? This is why I don't carry cash. And then I had my running shoes and I was by the trail. So I was like, I'm just going to make some lemonade over here. Don't mind me. Anyway, it was fine because I. Because I wasn't in a hurry. If you were in a hurry, I felt sorry for you because you were going nowhere fast. Yeah, you're in trouble if you're in a hurry. Uh, all right. Well, I'm glad you were able to take advantage of it. <laughs> uh, Green County's Judicial Circuit now has two new judges uh, presiding. Governor Parson appointed Derek Ankrum as circuit judge and Nathan Taylor as associate circuit judge in Green County. Ankrum is from Springfield. Taylor is from Stratford. You know, we've been telling you about this. Green County has lost uh, a few judges, more than a few, to retirement in recent months. So they're trying to fill those positions. Yeah. Congratulations to both of them and to Missouri State University. They just received the largest one-time gift in history of the university. It was an eight-figure amount, although the university does not give exactly how much it was. So that's interesting. But um, that means it's at least $10 million. So that's amazing. Uh, the CW Titus Foundation gifted MSU, and it's going to support a new facility for arts education, as well as social sciences and humanities. Wow. That's a good size gift. It keeps on giving, apparently. It's awesome. <clears throat> Mercy Hospital has reopened its lactation clinic in Springfield located at Mercy's Family Resource Center. That's on Cherokee Street. Uh, the clinic had been closed since COVID. When everything shut down, it shut down, never reopened. Uh, prior to that, though, it had been open for the last 15 years. The lactation clinic is open now, 8 to 5, Monday through Thursday, to help new parents. And we remember those days. We do remember those days. I actually used the clinic, not the Mercy one, but the Cox equivalent. I don't even know what it's called, the women's center or something. I, they, it has a different name, but the same thing. And I called them multiple times. In fact, I thought maybe my call in life was to be like a cheerleader for women who were struggling to nurse their babies. I was like, you just need a cheerleader and you'll be fine. But you do need a cheerleader because it's flipping hard at first. Um, and that's what they are. They were like my cheerleader. And then I wanted to cheer for other people. So anyway, as it turns out, it wasn't my call in life, but for a season of time, I felt like that's what I was doing. Um, all right. So we were talking about the heat and all the different weather related stories in the newscast today. And the heat uh, is bad here and in Kansas. Apparently this weekend in Kansas, Johnson County reported 150 people having to get heat related illness treatment on the spot at an air show in Gardner, Kansas. So most of them were treated on site, but five of them out of the 150 did have to go into the hospital because of heat related issues. Uh, so doctors say hydration is the key 
And instead of guzzling a bottle of water, once you are in the heat and at practice or wherever it may be, make sure that you are drinking consistently small amounts all throughout the day. A sip here, a sip there. I got my water right here. Oh, look at that. Stay on the top of my hydration. You see that? Well, yeah. Hydration first. Cumulative uh, we were up intake. In, we were, uh, it, I mean, well, we have an excessive heat warning. It's going to be hot all week. It's going to be crazy all week for this late in the year, too. But we have excessive heat warning in place until Thursday night at 10 o'clock. You can imagine that. So it's going to be like 100 degrees all week long and then 99 on Friday. So no more, no more excessive heat warning. We're good with 99. Uh, but I was up in Kansas city. We had soccer games this weekend and uh, we had two games on Saturday. Uh, the first game, it was fairly pleasant because it was early nine. Uh, what did we play? 10 45 or something like that. And then the second game was in the heat of the day. It was afternoon and it was hot and they have these crazy rules there that the kids, you can't have umbrellas at the bench and you can't have an actual bench. So we had both for our kids. We had a bench there and then we had umbrellas giving the kids shade because it's 102 degrees. They're playing on turf, which adds at least 10 degrees. I would think it's like an oven and they came and they took away the umbrellas and the bench. So the kids are now sitting on the hot turf. I mean, it was, it was ridiculous given how hot it was about 10 minutes later, one of our kids throws up because he's so hot and they call they call the whole ever all the games off at that point because one of our kids threw up and they're like oh it's too hot now we got to stop the games and then Ethan was I'm, fit to be tied he called me he's like they took down the tent what do you mean they it took wasn't down even, the no, tent it wasn't a why tent. would they we, take down the tent we didn't we knew they weren't allowing a tent or the umbrella is, whatever it it's is it's an umbrella, umbrella to give kids shade from the heat i mean it's insanity it was 102 so then and there's a lot of springfield people who drive up for this they on Sunday morning we found out at about 9:30 that they were canceling all the games after 1 p.m. Well, we had two games that day, both of them after 1 p.m. The first one was at 1, the second one was at 4:45 or something. So instead of telling us the day before, so I wouldn't have had to stay at a hotel and spend the night in Kansas City to know that our games were postponed and canceled, they told us Sunday morning. When we've known since Tuesday of last week that it was going to be 102 both days, it was just very poorly planned. So then a, a bunch of people who had a, from Springfield who had an earlier game at 1130 or something, they all drove up only to find out that they're going to play shortened halves. So they drove a total of five hours, some of them longer than that, maybe six, depending on where they live, to play two 15-minute halves of soccer. <laughs> 30 minutes total and then had to drive home and not play a second game. And then that game is going to be made up. So they're going to have to drive up just to play one game. Some other time it's, it was a disaster. It was a anyway. Suffice to say it's hot. It's very it was hot. hot. That's the moral of the story. But we knew it was going to be hot. <laughs> and so if you're yes, gonna, and it's going to cancel stuff. Do it in advance. I know I, it was, I was, chuckling a little bit because i felt like it could be an episode of seinfeld when you were like what's with the tents why won't they allow it? not the tents the umbrellas what's with the umbrella? umbrella what's wrong with the umbrella yeah anyway and then once the kid puked it was like we're done <laughs> yeah it was like that was the magic ticket to end all of the games, all right not we're just going us. over our lot of time sir if you could just go ahead and give us the last story of the well, newscast Doggone it. I think people are interested in what I do on the weekend, and I wanted them to feel my pain because it was absurd. <laughs> as much as they're interested as what people are eating on Facebook, right? Just post a picture of your food and everybody cares. Um, uh, all right. Ready, set, of, go. Last story. Ready, A lot of people from it. Springfield were quite unhappy over the weekend about what happened. Anyway, we were, uh, we were in Kansas City. The Chiefs played, so we got to watch them uh, on TV while we were up there in the Chiefs territory. This is Chiefs territory, too. I know that. Uh, they looked good in their second preseason game uh, over the weekend. They returned to the scene of their Super Bowl 57 victory to take on the Arizona Cardinals, who are not really any good. They whooped them 38 to 10. Chiefs are now one and one in the preseason. Not that it matters much. Uh, star quarterback Patrick Mahomes played a little. He finished with uh, 10 for 15 completions for 105 yards and one touchdown. So 
they're uh, they're getting back into form, which is good. Very exciting. All right, there you go. There's your 15 minutes worth of news. Five of it, a tirade for Mr. Foreheads, but I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I've been waiting um, to get this off my chest. It was I a could long tell. Week, a long I knew that weekend. we were going to go there once I saw that the heat was back in the forecast. I was like, we're going to get the story. It's going to happen. Anywho, have a great Monday. <laughs> I hope that school is amazing for everybody today. That's where I am headed as well. So have a good one. Stick around for Abby Dyer's Wake Up Weather, or you can get it wherever you get this podcast. Check it out. She'll tell you what's happening today and all week. Have a great Bye. day.